Hey guys, Ben here from Banthero Drives. And in this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to install a direct drive propeller onto your engine with our new aluminum hubs. And this is compatible with both the UltraProp blades and our new Bandit blades. In this case, I've got an UltraProp to use as, as an example. This is the UltraProp kit with blades, pitch blocks, and then the installation hardware. And the direct drive kit has these two hub halves here, the front half and the rear half and then the bushing that comes with the kit, along with these three bolts for the bushing. And we'll use this uh, safety bolt as well at the very end. So the first step is to make sure that the mating surfaces of the bushing and the inside of this front hub are completely clean. Usually the aluminum hub comes clean from the machine shop, but oftentimes when these bushings are packaged, they have some oil. So be really careful to wipe this off. Use a clean paper towel or a shop rag and some alcohol. Uh, make sure it's really clean. You don't want any sort of uh, anti-seize or uh, lubricant of any kind uh, between these two parts. And this is actually the most important part of the installation. So we want to line up the hub here so that we have the unthreaded holes on the back side of this aluminum hub lining up with the threaded holes on the bushing here. So what that does is when we put these quarter 20 bolts that came with the bushing in, as we tighten these up, this is what actually holds the whole assembly onto the engine shaft. What happens is there's a matching taper on these mating surfaces here. And as we tighten these bolts, it actually pulls this bushing further and further into the aluminum hub and because the bushing has a slot, it actually tightens the bushing around the PTO shaft on the engine. So it's very important to make sure you have the bolts going through the clearance holes, unthreaded holes on the aluminum hub into the threaded holes in this bushing. Make sure you're not putting them through the threaded holes in this hub because that won't tighten the whole thing up. So for now, I'm just kind of snugging these up very gently just to make sure it's staying in place. But we don't want to actually tighten these just yet. So once that's done, it's actually time to install the blades. And so for this one, this is a left-hand prop, which is pretty much what you'll have on most of the small engines like Predators and Hondas and Vanguards uh, in a pusher application on a small engine. They're all left-hand propellers. Um, first, take the, uh, the long bolts here. These are AN quarter-inch bolts. We put them in from the front side here. And then flip it upside down, trying to keep the bolts from falling out if you can. And if you line this up where you're looking at it and you have one of the blade uh, roots facing up, for a left hand propeller, what you want to do is line this pitch block up so that if you were to pour water on the right side, it'll flow from right to left. That'll be a left-hand installation. So take a moment to be really careful about how you line these up. It's really easy to get them backwards. Uh, then you'll do the same thing for the other two. So this is the high point, low point, high point, low point, high point, low point for a left-hand propeller. And then we'll install the blades. So these are, in this case, ultra prop blades. They're pretty similar to the bandit blades. You want to put them on upside down. So that means we're looking at the back of the propeller here. And what you want to do is look at the back of the propeller blades. The back is the, the flat side. So we'll put this on like this. This means that when you're standing behind the engine in a pusher application uh, where the air will be blowing on your face, you'll be looking at the flat side of the blades, not the curved side. So be very careful about that as well. If you get them on backwards, it actually will blow air, just not nearly as much as it should. So like that. And then once you're done with that, we'll just put the second of each of the pitch block pairs over the top, facing the opposite direction. Okay. And then this one can be a little bit easier with a helper, but you can do it by yourself. You squeeze the bolts up 
through from the underside. Like that. And then put the backing plate over the top. And these are all pretty tight clearances, so sometimes you have to jiggle these around a little bit to get all of the, uh, the bolts to go through the holes here in the backing plate. Okay, once you have that, you want to put one of these washers on each one. And then one of the nylon locking nuts. And we'll just thread them on until we hit the nylon lock part for the moment. Okay, for these, I'm just going to snug these up using just a regular wrench. This is a uh, quarter 20 bolts, so they need 7 16 wrench. And I'll just go around and snug these up. And for the final torquing, we'll switch to a, a torque wrench. We like to use a small quarter inch drive torque wrench because on the larger torque wrenches, the torque here is on the very low end of the range. So they're not usually as accurate, but you want 115 inch pounds on the torque wrench. And there are two ways to do this. You can torque these down here before you actually install the prop on the engine. Um, I'm gonna do that just to show the entire process. Optionally, you also can wait to do the final torque once it's installed on the engine, where it's a little bit less awkward because you're not having to hold the propeller. I'm going to go ahead and do it here just to show how we're doing it. And it's not that important, but I'm kind of going around every other bolt. Okay, I've only gone around once. Uh, when it's on the engine, I'll actually go around a second time and snug them up, make sure they get to 115 um, inch pounds. Um, this is also, as you can see, kind of awkward doing it on a table like this, just so you can see it. It's a lot easier if you have it standing up and you can do it on a carpeted surface or something. But um, anyway, that's the gist of it. So you want to go around usually each bolt about twice, making sure you get to the full torque. And also it's in the instructions, but you want to be careful to read those carefully and make sure you just go double check the torque after a few minutes of running and after a few hours as well, just to make sure uh, some of these can settle because they're glass uh, reinforced nylon. The blade roots and the pitch blocks can settle very slightly. And so you may need to torque these up just a little bit after a little bit of runtime. Um, so next up, we will install this on the engine. Okay, so now we're ready to install the propeller onto the engine. This part goes pretty fast, but again, the most important part, or one of the most important parts, is to make sure that the mating surface is here. So in this case, the inside of the bushing, and then the PTO shaft of the engine are both free of grease and uh, dust or anything like that. If you have an older engine, just make sure if it's got rust, just take some scotch bright to it, make sure it's it's a relatively clean metal here because you're relying on a good uh, frictional contact between the engine shaft and this bushing to transmit all the torque to the propeller. So what we want to do is turn it around. Remember, we want to be looking at the flat sides of the blades. And then I'm going to roughly line up the slot for the keyway. And slide it onto the PTO shaft of the engine. 
So here you've got some flexibility in how far up on the PTO shaft you go. It's important just to make sure at the very least you have the entire bushing seated uh, onto the shaft. You can go higher and further up if you want to, um, but we usually have it uh, about at that level where it's just sort of flush with the end of the shaft. Um, this is also a good time to use the included key stock. When we're doing a permanent install or a you know, long, longer term install, we'll use maybe a drop of a blue Loctite, slide it in from the back there, just to make sure it can't fall out during operation. Sometimes it's a little hard to line it up, but. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. Okay, and all the hardware is already installed. So the, uh, the three quarter 20 bolts that secure the hub to the bushing are already in. We put those in the very first thing. All we have to do now is torque them down. So for that, we're using again a small torque wrench, uh, the quarter inch drive torque wrench, this time with a short extension on it. And the nice thing is what this is called is a reverse mount. So normally you have to be on the back side of the propeller and shaft to torque these bolts. And oftentimes there's really tight clearances, or if you have like a cage or some kind of protective enclosure, it gets in the way. Um, in this case, you've got clearance holes here on the backing plate so you can easily access these bolts to torque them. This is the only downside. Occasionally extension pops off, but we're going to go around and just gradually snug these up. And these bolts are rated to nine foot pounds, which is 108 inch pounds. And as you want to get close to the final torque, you want to go around. In this case, I'm going clockwise, doesn't really matter, but make sure you hit the bolts in the same order until you get the full torque. There's the first one. And we usually go around twice. There we go. Okay, so now it's installed. And so you should have a really nice friction fit between the bushing here and the propeller hub. So they spin as, as one unit now. And last, this is optional, but we'll sometimes use a added safety bolt. So this goes into the shredded hole in the end of the PTO shaft. So this is a 7 16 fine thread for the engine 1 8 shafts. The, one inch shafts come with a, a 3 8 fine thread. We'll put that on. We're just doing this temporarily, so we're not going to add any Loctite, but normally you'd want to use blue Loctite or a couple drops uh, to make sure this will not back out when you're running. And it's important to note, this is not doing anything to hold the propeller onto the shaft by itself. This is just sort of added safety if something were to happen to the bushing. But if you install the bushing correctly, um, you actually don't have to have the safety bolt. We don't usually have it, but it's just in case something goes wrong. It's not a bad idea. And we're not going to torque it down now because we're about to take it right back off. But you want to just barely snug this up with blue Loctite, let it cure for a, little, a short bit. Um, you don't want to actually exert any real clamping force or real torque on this bolt. It's just a, a safety keeper. Um, so that's it. After that uh, sets up, you're ready to run. You do, um, at this point, want to make sure if you didn't fully torque the, the propeller bolts, these six bolts here, uh, go around two clicks on each. 
now would be the time you want to make sure you get final torque, 115 uh, inch pounds on each of those bolts a couple times. And then make sure you remember to check these after a run in, after you know a few minutes and after a few hours, just double check these to make sure they're fully torqued. So one alternative to the process I showed you earlier that can sometimes be easier if you have room to work behind the propeller is you can actually take the starting point like earlier where you have the bushing installed loosely to the aluminum uh, hub. You can actually install this to the PTO shaft of your engine first before you install the blades and the other back side of the hub. All you do is just slide this on as before, uh, make sure you add your key stock, and then you would torque these three bolts like discussed earlier in the video. Only now you're able to do this without any of the other uh, propeller parts in the way. And then what you do is feed in the uh, propeller or the blade installation bolts from behind like this. And then install the blades and the pitch blocks in the blades. Just like before, only now the hub is already mounted to the engine. So you would do this all the way around, add the blades on the back side of the hub. The only caveat here is you have to make sure you have room when you're tightening everything down, torquing everything, <clears throat> to get a wrench in the back side. So this method doesn't work as well if you have really tight clearances like a tight fitting cage or something to work around, where you're working with a really short PTO shaft where you can't get in behind it very well. This can actually be easier if you do have that space. One more thing looking down from above now, once you've finished installing the propeller onto your engine shaft, just do a quick check and make sure you have at least a small gap between the flange of the bushing and the aluminum uh, face of the hub here. It should generally be about a sixteenth of an inch, could be a little more or a little less, but that flange is uh, supposed to be there. If you do see there's no gap here, it usually means that the PTO shaft could be a little bit undersized. So. Just double check, make sure you have a, a small gap there. If you do, you're good to go. That means you've got the full torque and full clamping force of the bushing onto the, uh, the PTO shaft. Okay, last I'll show you how to remove the prop. It's actually really quick and easy. Um, first take off the keeper bolt, if you have it. I just put this on loosely uh, just to demonstrate. So we're gonna take that off first. If you use blue Loctite, you'll have to probably break it loose. And remove the safety bolt. Next, what you want to do is you want to break loose the three quarter 20 bolts that hold the hub onto the bushing. So we'll do that with a wrench with extension through the holes here in the backing plate. And then once you've broken them loose, you can actually use an impact. We just recommend not using an impact to actually break them loose or tighten them, but Okay, so here are those three bolts. All we're gonna do is we're gonna thread those back in the three other holes in the back side of the aluminum hub. So this time we're actually using the threaded holes. It's a little tricky to get them started, but once you do, that's, it goes quick. Sometimes we'll just use one of these sockets on an extension. And that one started. And we're now going into the threaded holes here. And what this does is this pushes through these threaded holes and it actually pushes the hub as you tighten them back off of the bushing. It'll pop it right off. So there's no need to use a puller or anything like that to get this off of the PTO shaft.
So again here, you can use an impact to, uh, to get them released partially on, but we don't recommend using the impact once you've hit resistance because uh, it is really easy to shear the bolt with the heads off these, these small bolts. So be really careful with that. Okay, once you hit resistance, you want to go around really slowly, alternating between the bolts. Go about a quarter of a turn at a time. It'll be really, maybe less than a quarter, maybe an eighth of a turn at a time. It'll be really hard at first. And you may hear some popping noises as it starts to break loose. At some point, it's loose enough just to pop the whole thing right off, like that. And optionally, this is um, a way you can do it where you leave the whole propeller uh, assembled. You have even, even easier access if you want. You can actually take these nuts off here, take the backing hub off, and take the blades off themselves. So you have really easy access to the back of this, this front hub. That's also an option, too, if you don't mind taking the whole thing apart. But... The way I showed you allows you to take the prop easily off and on without uh, removing the blades. So you can drop it onto a different engine or do anything else you want. Um, so anyway, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching the video and it was helpful. And uh, please let us know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks.